from some great women, um, had a great interview, great connections in New York. But just talking about why our circumstances never change, why our circumstances never change. Why is it? You know, we have our affirmations that we uh, we say we have our daily affirmations. We name it and claim it. Oh, oh, we have all this great stuff. And then we still frustrated at the end of the day when things haven't changed. When we accumulated um, houses, land, money, things, purses, shoes, we look good on the outside. But internally, emotionally, psychologically, spiritually things are the same they never change they never change physically things are still the same so let me just talk to you for a minute why and i just want to share why your circumstances never change because we are we have mastered whoo, we have mastered masking the truth we have mastered masking the truth. We know the right things to say. We know how to make it look like it's something that is not. But on the inside, our circumstances are still the same. And so we're going to talk about that from a few angles. I'm trying not to be on too long today because I got homework I got to get done. <laughs> but I want to share this because, um, you know, sometimes if, for those people that have ever written a book, or written several books um what happens is this sometimes you have to go back and read your own material you have to read your own material and you're like wow and i shared this in my interview last week with the young lady that um and which um she janet griffin was wonderful she did a great in interview with me and i appreciate that i shared this information a lot of times we as people we say we want something that we really don't want. We say we want something that we really don't want. We want the pain from the situation or the circumstance to change, but we really don't want the circumstances to change because we don't want to change. We want the pain, the emotional pain, the physical pain, the negativity of that circumstance to change, but we really don't want the circumstance to change. We want to stay in it, but we don't want to hurt anymore. We want to stay in it where we are, but we don't want to feel that emotional um, despair anymore. So we really don't want change because we're not willing to change to get a change. I always say this, insanity is this, doing the same thing, expecting a different result. Doing the same thing, saying the same thing, eating the same food, cussing out the same people, fussing about the same thing. And you think that it's not going to change. You have to change for change to occur. Your circumstances will never change unless you change them. You have to change something or a series of things for it to change. So let me just read this segment out of my book. Let's talk breaking unwanted cycles, a guide to living a more fulfilling life. And it says this, to produce a permanent change, whether it be psychologically, emotionally, or physically, understanding must be conceived before change is birthed in your life. Knowledge produces confusion and chaos when understanding is not the power producer that brings the reality of the information and knowledge into existence. I'm going to read that one to you again. To produce a permanent change, physically, psychologically, emotionally, understanding must be conceived before you birth, before it's birthed in your life. Knowledge produces confusion when understanding is not the power producer that brings the reality of the information or knowledge into existence. The one thing that's worse than a person not having knowledge is a person that has knowledge but lacks understanding how to get that knowledge to work in their life. Now that's just in 
I wrote that. Um, and I say this because, see, this is the information. We live in a world that is, we can Google anything. Information is available to us. Information, knowledge is available to us. To us, we have six steps, five steps, 20 steps, 12 steps, you know, three steps to make things change in your life. We have all those steps, but nothing ever changes. You go through the steps, you go through the motions, you take the classes, you take the seminars. You know how to maximize, three steps, how to maximize your life. You go through all of this and you in it and you follow those steps for a few months or a few weeks and then bam, you're back to the same cycle. Then you go take another five steps. How to improve your health, how to improve your relationship, how to make more money, how to save more money, how to be more spiritual, how to, however it is. And then you follow those steps for a little while and then bam, you're back in the same routine you were in again. And then here comes another step. And then you end this cycle of continually taking these steps, searching, seeking, and your circumstances never change. Aren't you tired of that? Aren't you tired of it? You're spending all this money. <laughs> you're spending all this time. You're searching here and you're searching there. And guess what? You still end up in the same situation that you were in when you started. Let me tell you why your circumstances never change. Because you haven't changed. You don't understand why you need to change. It's simple. I, when I tell y'all this stuff is simple, I'm not telling you anything because I just got this great idea. You know, I'm telling you what I had to live. Life is really simple. Now, my standard is the word of God. And he said that his word is real simple. The problem is this. We don't do, we as humans, we don't do simple good. Simple is too simple for us. Because if it's too simple, we just think, oh, that can't work. It's got to be something else. It's real simple. If you want your circumstance to change, you first have to change. But before you can change, you got to have understanding. Understanding. And I, I talk about this a lot. Um, you see alcoholics, people that's addicted to drugs, even food. They go eat, and you know, because I struggle with my weight too. Why is it that they go through these programs and they do great for a while, but then they seem to find themselves back in the same cycle or even worse? One thing, because we're creatures of habit. We are creatures of habit, habit, habit of habit. So when we start on a new cycle, of change to produce something change and we don't have a good understanding when life happens we go back to what felt right what comforted us emotionally so we start that same cycle over again so what you have to do is you have to find seek understanding understanding is a wellspring of knowledge for those that have it that's in Proverbs understanding is a wellspring a wellspring for those that have it. we lack understanding how do you get understanding you say well first of all you got to sit back reevaluate every aspect of your life a lot of us are moved by our wants no, I'm sorry. A lot, of our, a lot of us are moved by our needs and not our wants. A lot of us are moved by our need and not wants. Well, Tara, what do you mean when you say that? Well, a lot of us know that we need to get out of a bad relationship. A lot of us know that we need to save money. A lot of you guys know that you need to get healthier or lose weight. A lot of you guys know that you need to start writing that book. 
A lot of you guys know, you know that you need to do some, a lot of things in your life. You need to do that. But you're not driven by your need. Because if you were driven by your need, it would be done. We are driven by our wants. We are driven by what we want. If you don't want it, you don't get up and move to go get it. When you want a new house, you may need one. But when you want one, you go find your realtor. You go drive around on Sundays after church. When you get off from work, looking for a new house, going in all the new neighborhoods. When you want some new shoes, you're online, you're going to all the Macy's, you're going to wherever you go to get your shoes, looking for new shoes. You move by your wants. When you want something, you're moved by it. Not so much your need. I used to say this. I smoked cigarettes for, oh, geez. I don't know how many years, but I hadn't. I, my son is 22. Oh, God, wow. I got a son. That, my baby was going to be 22. Well, he just turned 22 on the 7th. Um, I haven't smoked in 22 years. Smoked cigarettes in 22 years. Over 22 years. And I was moved by not my need. Because I would always say, well, I need to stop smoking cigarettes. I need to stop smoking cigarettes. They're not good for your health. The back of the pack of cigarettes says, hey, cigarettes cause cancers. They cause stroke. Uh -huh. Cigarettes cause, they got cause you to have it. So you need to stop smoking cigarettes. That didn't drive me enough to say, hey, I'm going to stop. That wasn't what made me stop. I wanted to stop. I was... For you guys that don't know, my first profession is a professional cosmetologist. And I was working for a company at this time doing platform work. And I had a hair show um, in Barbados. And I told myself this. Understand. I understood that I didn't want to smoke cigarettes anymore. I didn't like how they made me feel. I didn't make like my black lips that I had. I didn't like how they were making me look old. And I didn't like spending money. <laughs> Cigarettes had gone up at that, that time. They were going up to $5 a pack. And I was like, I, I'm not doing that. Not spending that $5 on a pack of cigarettes. So I told myself this. I'm smoking my last cigarette on my way to the airport before I go to Barbados. I smoked my last cigarette at home before I even got in the car to go to Atlanta to get up to catch the flight to Barbados. And I haven't smoked a cigarette since because I understood, listen to me carefully, I understood my reasoning for wanting to stop smoking. It wasn't my need. It wasn't my need. So let me talk about it a little bit. So guess what? Um, understanding our triggers. How do we get things to change? If we don't understand what makes us click. If we don't understand our, because see, you're not going to get this from a eight step, a 12 step, a 20 step. You're not going to get your understanding from taking some steps that somebody else gave you. You're not going to get your understanding from just reading this book. Not. Or reading somebody else's great book. It's not. You have to sit down and look at yourself and re-evaluate. What is it? What is it? And why do I really want this? What is it? I had a young lady that said, you know what? I know I'm in a really bad um, relationship and I really need to get out of it. I said, okay. And it gave me a, this, you know, really sad story, which, yeah, she really needs to get out of it. But the thing about this, let me tell you why she'll never get out of it. She don't want to. She wants the situation to change. 
That's what she wants. She wants the situation to change. Because she's praying, you know, pray for him and, you know, you know, pray for him to do better and, you know, love be right. Oh, that's good. Now, don't get me wrong. All of that's good. All of that's great. But she will never change that situation. Her circumstance will never change until she understands I deserve love. But she won't understand that until she understands how to love herself and why she deserves it. Because, see, we can say all these cliches things, all these cliches, you know, I'm every woman, it's all in me, I deserve the best. And you do. You deserve someone that's going to love you the way that you need and you receive love. You deserve to have the best in life. This is what a woman's month, national Woman, women's month or whatever. And we go through all of this stuff and all this stuff sounds great. But then after, at the end of it, we're still the same. And that irritates me. We have to do something different. Change only changes. It change only occurs when you change and you cannot change until you get an understanding. You have to understand why you want or need to change. You got to get an understanding of that. You can't get an understand. And if you don't understand who you are and what makes you click, what drives you, what motivates you, guys, you will never get an understanding and you will be in the same circumstances, the same situation over and over and over again with your list of affirmations, with your naming and claiming, with your reading your books, with your taking this class, with your going to this seminar, with, you, with your uh, all your programs that you take, you're still going to be in the same situation. Same situation. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but I'm just telling you something that I live. I live this miserable in different circumstances in my life with relationships, with friends, with money. Because I'm the queen of buying shoes now. Let me tell you, I love me some shoes. I love going shopping. I was in New York. My shoes tore up. Before I left the airport, and I love those shoes. I love my boots. They were so comfortable. <laughs> they tore up the, my whole bottom part fell out, and I posted it. And people were like, "Oh, you know, that's your that's your sign to go shoe shopping." Mm -mm. No, it's not. Because I made a decision that Tara was gonna live a simple, confined life, and I don't need all those shoes because I wasn't wearing all those shoes. Now, did it mean that I need to go buy me some new boots? Yep, I did. But I didn't buy any boots in New York because I didn't go to New York to shop. I went for an interview and I went to support my friends. So I had to get an understanding. Why are you shopping, Tara? Why? I was buying shoes, buying clothes, buying whatever because I was trying to fill an emotional void. It was a drug to me. So when I got upset, when I needed to fix people call it, oh, it's retail therapy. Uh-uh. No, 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 no. Retail therapy will have you broke. It'll have you broke. You have a whole lot of things and stuff. You be Gucci, Louis Vuitton, down, Michael Kors, have every name brand, every shoe. And guess what? You still going to be emotionally disconnected and have a void. That stuff doesn't make you who you are. It does not. And I had to get an understanding of that. If I'm going to save some money, I don't need those clothes because I'm not wearing them anyway. If you think about it, and I'm, I don't know how I got on this rack because I'm going to be closing in just a minute because I got to get my homework done. I had to learn this. I got all of these clothes. I only go certain places. This is for somebody. I only go certain places. And if you notice, you wear the same clothes and, ro and rotation. Well, I did anyway. Unless I had somewhere special to go, then I go pull out this and I go pull out that. I need all that stuff. I need all that stuff. Now, when something tears up, my boots tore up, 
I'm going to buy me another pair of brown boots. Matter of fact, I ordered me some brown shoes. But I don't need eight different pair of brown boots, different styles. I don't need all of that because it doesn't make me who I am. When I step out, I'm cute everywhere I go. I was all in New York and I'm not bragging on myself. I'm all in New York and people are like, oh, you're so cute. Oh, I like what you have on. Oh, your hat look good. These people didn't know me. They, they people didn't know me from a hill of bean. They didn't know if I was from New York or from wherever. I had people staying at me, not to brag, but I had to understand whether I look like hobo, showbo. I'm still cute to talk, whether you think it or not. So it's not about the things that you have. So to change that circumstance, I had to get an understanding. Tara, stop. Stop buying things when your emotions are up in a ray or, or when your emotions are everywhere, when you stressed or distressed or somebody made you mad or you upset. Stop going shopping. It's not going to change the situation. Then you're going to be depressed when you look at your credit card and you just spent $2,000 on some stuff that you can't even get in your closet and that you'll never wear. And by the time you want to wear it, you didn't gain too much weight <laughs> to wear it. So, people, you have to. 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 I'm going to get ready to close. If you want your circumstances to change, first thing you got to do, reevaluate if you really want it to change. Not what you need, but if you want your circumstances to change. If you want your circ circumstance to change, then the next thing you need to do is reevaluate. Well, why? Why do I want it to change? And that starts with you, not the people that's affecting it, you. Not the people that's involved, but you. Why does you why do you want it to change for you? And then once you decide, you get an understanding why and understand why you wanted to change, then you got to put the work in, baby. That's all to it. You got to put the work in. Got to put the work in. Got to put the work in. You don't put the work in, not going to change. Not going to change. Not going to save money. Not going to have a better relationship. Not gonna feel like you value, you're not gonna feel um 